What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Kevin Moore Show. Now if you want to stay up to date with all my latest videos, just click that subscribe button below as this really helps to support the show. Now if you're new to the show, I interview guests from a spiritual perspective covering mainstream and alternative subjects, real life inspirational stories, self-improvement and much more. So this interview was recorded a few weeks ago with myself and Ann Jones. And just to give you a bit of background on Anne, in 1992, Anne suddenly and unexpectedly was guided by a voice to go out and help heal. Anne raised the challenge and began treating friends and family. And from there, she expanded to giving workshops and retreats in which Anne has been helping people from across the world to better understand themselves heal scars of trauma, reclaim confidence, self-esteem, and love. Now, I've also got a special offer on for today's show for Anne's Spiritual Energy Healing Course, which comes with a free copy of her book, Heal and Be Healed. Just go to channeling.com forward slash Anne Jones or the thekevinmoreshow.com forward slash Anne Jones. And all the links are in the description below. So enjoy my interview with Anne. Anne Jones, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kevin. Lovely to be here. It's great to have you on. And wow, I could do multiple shows with yourself. Do you know that? Um, how many books have you done? I know I ask this question to a lot of guests, but you have done quite a few. I've got, yeah, I've got six books that are published with Piacus, uh, which are part of the Little Brown Hatchet Group. So there's six books there. And then I've got three small books, which are books that you, pocket books, you know, little pocket books. Um, and there's a few more that I'm just finishing at the moment. So at the moment, there's nine books. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot. And um, when did you first write your first book then? This book came not too long after I started doing the healing. Um, everything moved really pretty fast when I first started to heal. Um, well, I was in Malaysia at the time when, when it all kicked off for me. And uh, when I had been teaching, I, I went very quickly from being told to be a healer. And I had a bit of an experience. I think I've mentioned this to you before. It was quite an interesting start to my spiritual journey. Uh, most people seem to, unfortunately, start their journeys when they, they're sick, ill, or some major trauma occurs in their life. You know, you, I always see it as the, you're the cat, you know, the cartoon cat that splattered against the wall, and you're just like, Duh! and uh, then you sort of fall to the floor, and then you think, right, 
now what? And you get on and you start your journey. You say, oh, there's got to be another way. I've got to find a way to sort myself and so on. Whereas I was really lucky because it didn't happen like that for me. I, I was lucky. I, I, I was in Malaysia with my husband. Uh, he was working there. And uh, one, I was teaching how, uh, teaching how to use computers, actually. That was my background. That was my previous life, if you like. The, the, I was in IT. We used to call it computers in those days. S sounds more exotic now, IT. But anyway, we, um, I was teaching uh, the expat wives in Malaysia uh, how to use uh, computers. And I was having a rest in the afternoon, which you can do when you've got armors and cleaners and drivers and gardeners and everything. Life's very good as an expat. And uh, I was just having a rest on my bed and I heard a voice and the voice was very loud, very clear. And it said, isn't it time you started healing? And uh, it was a bit of a shocker. It wasn't what I was expecting, um, but it also felt absolutely right. And I've got whooshes all through me, and that's the sort of technical term I use for energy whooshes. Any, any, any energy rushing through you that, and and it was a bit like being plugged into the wall, you know, electricity supply. So it's quite exciting, and um, it was quite funny because I heard the voice and I sat upright. And then I was starting talking back to the voice before I realized what I was doing. And I said, well, well, yeah, but how? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? And I got a voice, came back, fortunately, it didn't abandon me at that point, and said to speak to a person called Sal. And I knew Sal. She was on my, uh, I, was, I was running a magazine at the time, and uh, she was on the magazine committee. So I knew who they were talking about. <clears throat> and um, that was it. That was all I was given. So I went to see Sal, and Sal was waiting for me, and that was the interesting thing. That was mega spooky. If that hadn't been spooky enough, having uh, the person I was told to, to connect to being told, oh, yes, I've been waiting for you. Um, yes, yes, you're, you're, you know how to do all this. I'll send you some books. That'll remind you, and off you go. And um, she sent me some books by Betty Shine, who was a medium and quite popular in that. Day. We're talking about 25 years ago, so it's quite a while. But, yeah, Betty Shine was a lovely lady, and uh, she had a very simplistic and down-to-earth approach to healing, which resonated completely with me. I, I was a bit too down the path to start being too etheric and wishy-washy and weird. I had to be me. I had to be who I am doing this work. And and that's and she was very much that way. And she said, healing's just putting it out your hand and passing the love. So that seemed fairly simple. I did it and it all worked. And then I started to meditate, you know, um, there's, there's one of the things that everybody goes into when they start their spiritual journey is to meditate. And that was easy. It was just closing my eyes as far as I was concerned. And in came voices and and beings. And uh, more so than the now, funny enough, I suppose that was the development stage of my journey. And a, and a beautiful being came through and gave me uh, some symbols and set me off on my healing journey, if you like. And soon after I started doing the healing and it was working, um, I got another message and that was, and this is a long-winded answer to your question, <laughs> David. He said, you need to write a book. <clears throat> but before you write the book, we want you to do some workshops. They didn't actually use the word workshops, obviously. Teach. So... I started teaching very soon after I started to do the healing. And uh, it, it came quite naturally and, and easily. I've been a teacher before of computer, uh, teaching people how to do programming and so on on the computers. So it's as if I'd been geared up for this, you know. Uh, that's the interesting thing. Um, I always think that your whole life is your journey, not just the bit where you wake up. And everything beforehand leads you up to 
giving you the skills and experiences you need. And uh, so I was raring to go. I was teaching, and then I then and following their guidance. I say a bit bossy, but sometimes they are the guides. Uh, <laughs> but I, it seemed the natural thing to do was to write a book, and the first book was Heal Yourself, and I shared some of the symbols I've been given. I've been given symbols. And the, and the symbols were a way of invoking energies that bypass um, mine and anybody else who uses them, uh, doubts, fears, anxieties, the, any of the moods and the feelings you have, you know, like if you're down, if you're going through a downtime, you still want to be able to help people and you still want to be able to send the love and, the, and the, share, the, share the light. But it's quite difficult to do that when you're feeling a bit rough yourself. So the, chant, the lovely thing with the symbols that they gave me was that they, they set the intention and they channel the, bring the energies in. So all I have to do is direct to, it to where the energy, where it's got to go. So that was really the basis of the start of my work. Yeah, I mean, Malaysia, I mean, do you miss that hot weather? Oh, who wouldn't? I mean, really, it's absolutely awful at the moment here. It's cold, coldish, damp, you know, in England, very damp, very wet, very muddy. We've got two Labradors we take for a walk every day and we plow through the mud. And <clears throat> usually at this time of the year, I, I go to Malaysia you know, you have to find an excuse, don't you? But it's not difficult. I do workshops and things there and also visit friends. And it makes a, I mean, traveling around to all the best places. Kevin, I wish you the really loveliest places to go. Yes, yes. Very, very lucky. M Malaysia is a very beautiful place. I spent a, a bit of time there. And yeah. um, it's a it's a place of the haves and have-nots. And it's we're, we're a beautiful place. Uh, parts to visit in the country it's it's and the people are very beautiful and um a lot of history tied in with the uk there obviously from way back yes, in the day absolutely. right some always not so good <laughs> but uh yes, yes. Rather forget. <laughs> yeah yeah but uh well, this, yeah so was the uh you know that was the british empire wasn't it back in the day so and so much uh multicultural there as well and what a credit incredible place to have your awakening and you mentioned Betty Shine there, and it was obviously Betty Shine who um, awoke, well, was part of David Icke's uh, awakening process back in the day as well. I didn't know that. Yes, yes, it was a Betty Shine book that set him on his course and got him to, uh, you know, go see Betty Shine in the end. I did actually get to speak to Betty Shine's daughter, so she's still, you know, doing the work, but she she doesn't do interviews. I mean, she wants the, the books to sort of speak for themselves. But uh, highly recommended books, I mean, actually... The stuff in those books which speaks about you know talks about the times that we live in now as well with this pandemic interesting because she was very much into mantras and sound healing too wasn't she the daughter I, I, yeah 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 it, very interesting and and so you had this awakening there and and this voice has never left you would you say well it, it it has left me in some ways. Um, that that particular voice and that the 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 soul, if you like, who came through to me, or the whatever you, how you want to explain it. But for me, it was my grandmother, and my grandmother. I never actually met my grandmother. This is the interesting thing. Yeah, she died before I was born, but she was always very interested in spiritual matters and and things and. My, this I hear from my mother, and she, my mother, always says, if my grandmother had been around, she and I would have been joined at the hip, so that she could see there was a a lot of uh, affinity between us, even though we didn't meet. And my grandmother stayed around as my guide for the first four or five months of my uh, work, and then, then one day. She said to me, I'm leaving you now. I'll always be there for you, but you're going to get further guidance. And that's when the guide that came in gave me the symbol came in. And the guy that gave me the symbol was quite funny, really. This was a time when Reiki was taking off too. And um, 
<clears throat> everybody was talking about Reiki and the Reiki symbols. And this guy came in and, and he was huge, absolutely huge. I could, I mean, I saw it very clearly. Although I didn't see my grandmother, it was all the voice, with this guide, it was he was enormous. And he was an, a North American Indian and had a full the full fig, you know, with a he was dressed up like the Indians as we we see them in on the reservations. And uh he called himself Little Chief, which really he had a good sense of humor. He was huge. And uh, he said, I've got a, a symbol for you to use. Um, and and he drew the symbol for me. Um, but before he drew it, I went straight into to sort of rejection. I said, no, no, I don't want it because I don't want to look as if I'm copying Reiki, which is... You know, it's strange how your mind works in these situations. And I, I said, no, no. And he said, well, you're going to get it anyway. I'm going to give it to you. It's something you know. And he drew the symbol. And um, once he'd drawn it over me and I felt the energies that it invokes coming through me, I had no doubt whatsoever that this was a very powerful force and a very beautiful a beautiful thing to use. Um yeah, and he, he was around for quite a while. Uh, and then over the time, I, my other guides have come in. You know, I think most people find this, that you have the guide you need for the time and the moment you're in. Mm. So true. And what book did the symbols uh, end up in? Well, the, the, the Heal Yourself book has got some symbols in it in fact all the books have got symbols what happened was I would get a new uh, way of teaching or some teaching was a new way of healing like uh, I was for example I was shown at one time a lot about the soul and the spiritual energy and that when that came through I uh I started to teach it straight away. Well, as soon as I get something new, I would set up a course and start teaching. And uh, the soul energy and how the soul is, is and how the higher self is and how the whole thing hangs together, that went into the Soul Connection book. Um, and then, so then I was teaching it and then I wrote the book. And then I had another book, Healing Negative Energies. I've always been uh, given quite some challenging uh, clients with very challenging energies. I don't mean the, the clients are challenging, but the, 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 the problems they have are challenging. And uh, the, um, I've had to deal with quite a lot of black magic and curses and entities, demons and things like that in my clients i've been lucky that i haven't felt frightened by any of it so that that of course once you start doing that work you get a lot more of that work come in because it's not that many people that uh that put their hand up to do that and uh, that created another book healing negative energies and that was a lot about how to protect your energy how to manage the negative energies that affect you and and those energies of course are not just the demons but also other people's thoughts and people other people's emotions and and your own so that book covers those dealing with those situations to making sure that you stand strong and you're not affected by those negative energies. Yeah. What can be some of the side effects of having those sort of attachments on you? Well, um, uh, psychic attack, which is the word we use that covers the whole gamut of, of all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it comes across as, um, the shivers, cold feelings, your home can be affected. Uh, you can find that you walk into a room and you feel headaches. You can get feeling of pins and needles in your head. Um, very commonly, it's loss of energy. You feel absolutely wiped out. I had a, I had one experience which was very powerful, which really showed me the power of the sort of thing that witch doctors do. <clears throat> I have a charity 
uh, in, which set up for Africa, Hearts and Hands for Africa. And uh, my partner in the charity was Dr. Dr. Kerry. He'd, he was living out in Zambia, running the charity out there. And one of the things we wanted was some space to, to develop um, a place for the disabled, somewhere where we could teach uh, the eco farming, somewhere where we could um, put a clinic. And the, one of the local chiefs had offered us some land. And this was hugely exciting for us. And he got in touch with me and said, and this is our dream come true. You know, this is just what we want to do. And so he said, well, you come. So I, I jumped on a plane. And as I was getting on the plane, literally waiting to get on the plane, uh, uh, he got through to me and he phoned me and he said, we've got a problem. The land is cursed. And uh, nobody, nobody, none of the villagers will go anywhere near it. They won't touch it, won't go near it. So this is going to be a bit of a disaster. So I, I thought about it. And then I rang up Sal, who was the lady I was initially introduced to right at the beginning of, the, of my healing. And uh, I, I rang her and I said, what do I do? She said, well, go out there and clear it. Right. Okay. So that was that was that was the very obvious thing to do. And okay, off I go. So I went out there, and uh, going out to Zambia isn't that simple. Of course, you have to go via South Africa on a plane, and then on a bus, and then then on a, on a sort of six-hour car journey, and then you end up in the middle of this little village in the middle of no, no <clears throat> middle of nowhere. And uh, anyway, he set it up for me that. There were there just a few villagers who were prepared to lead me to the land, and they um, they took me there, and it was it was it, you know it was a wonderful experience actually, Kevin, because the it was it just visualised this it it's typical African uh, veldt type of place bush, um, very small shrubs. We had a, a beautiful river which I could see, um, not much vegetation, but some, it was nice, but the sun was just beginning to go down. And um, I thought, right, I mean, I'll just clear through this clearing and I did what I do and clear, brought the energies in. And I felt this curse clear. I, it was When I feel energies like that clear, there's just like a big, the word whoosh again, whoosh goes through me and I don't feel a, a a complete lifting of, of my energy as this this energy cleared so i called out to uh dr Kerry and the few brave souls that had come along and they came onto the land and it was beautiful the sun was going down a beautiful sunset and they started to sing their prayers and hymns and this was just Amazing, and I and I realised then how powerful this whole thing was of, of changing dark to light, and I felt really good. A bit too soon, really, because the very next day, because the village nearby was very happy about hearing about this land being cleared, they invited me to the village and said, "Would I go there?" They threw Kerry. They said, "Would I go and do some healing?" That they obviously heard that I was doing the healing and clearing so i said of course i'll go so i went to this village and you know you got to visualize this is those trees all around and then there's a a, a a clearing in the middle and all these beautiful people had come out decided to have a healing and kerry said to me and when you do healing you move your hands around all the time you know you might scare them a bit if you do that i think you should just play it cool just just do it without moving your hands so this was like oh can I do that <laughs> so, so used to waving my arms around. because actually what I'm doing is conducting the energy so I'm clearing it just so anyway I, I did what he suggested and I they, they all lined up and I went from one to the other and I and we were using the expression that I was like a telephone to God because they were all uh, missionary trained and mostly were Christian and 
I brought in the love and I said, this is love, which it is, it's simple. And I went through the 50 of them and I felt lots of energy shifting and clearing. So it felt very good. And then with all the big thank you, thank you, and off I go, I'm thinking, oh, that was wonderful. That was such a nice experience to do that. And suddenly, all my energy left me. My legs went completely to rubber. I just, Kerry had to catch me, stop me falling. And I said, you know, I've been zapped. I've been got a, a this is psychic attack. I, I have to get, sort myself. So he virtually carried me to the truck. And then from the truck, we went to this little guest house where I was staying. And I was wearing at the time the symbol for protection, which actually, that just happens to be sitting at the front. It's this symbol. And this symbol I had made into a pendant because people had asked me that they wanted the protection symbol. So I had it made into a pendant. And I had it around my neck, similar to the way I've got this uh, around my neck now. There was this, I was wearing this, this pendant and he was carrying me in and put me down. And then I just sat there and suddenly there was this whooshy wind type of feeling. I was at wind and my pendant threw off me. It was on something like this. Wind hit the wall and the, I could feel my energy coming back. And I was calling in Archangel Michael because Archangel Michael is the protector. And that was good. But uh, the, the, the interesting thing was that uh, the, the protection symbol that has got obsidian in it and what with the obsidian crystal and the protection symbol, that it taken this negative energy that it affected to me and sort of cleared it for me. So that was really lovely. And I, I found out, of course, it was the local witch doctors, they call them Sangomas in South Africa, really didn't like me um, showing some sort of competitive power, whatever they felt. And I felt they, I think they saw us as a competitor. But... Um, yeah, that was that was a real, uh, a really strong case of psychic attack. You people normally get a lot of bad luck as well. Sorry. Well, Go I was just going to say there as well. Do you think some healers, um, unbeknown to them or maybe known to them at some deeper level, are also some of them, you know, are giving off, are do have negative attachments to them, and they are giving off that energy when they when they sort of heal someone. So when you you know want to do this work or be a part of it you've got to use discernment as well as much as for receiving the work as sort of you know dishing the work out yeah you have to look the thing most important thing is you have to keep yourself clear you have to keep yourself fit you have to keep yourself you can't do this work when you're tired and what what happens healers do that they say yes 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 and they get burnt out and yes they do get affected look most of the people that come to me are healers that's that's the weird thing yeah the, i would say 80 percent of my clients are what we call light workers people who are here to bring in the light and the energies so and they they come to help for me to help them when they get into trouble from the just exactly as you said well yeah and that's if they want to take responsibility that they've got that sort of issue and um what do they call it? It's, it's the, the sort of wounded healer. And I don't know if I completely like that term, right? But, you know, it's, no. um, you know, if you've not dealt no. with your own stuff, there's nothing to say that just because you're not dealing with your own stuff, you can't go out there and help people. But it is beneficiary for both people if you have worked on yourself a little bit, right? Most definitely. Most definitely, right. You know, I've, I've created a healing course, which I've been teaching off and on for years and I've now made it online and one of the things in there is you have to start by healing yourself and everything in this course needs you need to apply to yourself because everything that I've is the the, the the healing experiences for myself that end up being the techniques I pass on to others right yeah. now that healing course as well is available uh, through my website I believe as well it's called healing energy course yep um yeah. Now, we're, we're trucking in a free uh, PDF book that's called uh, Healed to be Healed, right? 
Um, heal and be healed. Heal and be healed. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, and that's also available when you sign up for that course as well. Just go to yeah. um, uh, the Kevin Moore show dot com forward slash Anne Jones. The links on the screen and you'll see it in the description as well. And that's a uh, sort of moduled course. Yes, there's there's four modules, and each module is broken into sessions. This is all is a course that you download and work on your own your own speed, um, and it's covering all the techniques that I've learned over the last twenty five years, um, and the symbols. There's over thirty symbols, and the and the thing with the symbols. Can I show you the picture? The symbols. What the symbols do, and why they're so powerful, and why we need the symbols, or I need the symbols, and I, I think they're very really useful, is because they hold an intention. They're a language that speaks to, to, to spirit, to speaks to the universe. And, you know, you just said a lot of us have problems, and we do. I mean, nobody's perfect. If we were, we wouldn't be here, would we? So we've all got issues of some kind, and when you've got issues of any kind of anger or sense of guilt or regret or grievances about things, that's the normal human state, unfortunately. It'd be lovely to think we could all be in this highly evolved state immediately, but we, we aren't. We have to get ourselves there. And if we had to wait to do healing to get ourselves there, nobody would be doing healing for anybody. But the symbols... They allow us in that whatever state we're in to draw, to draw the symbol that invokes the energy, the highest frequency energy, and we then forward it to whoever needs it. So what's so good about the symbols is that whatever state you're in, you can still be a beautiful channel. Of course, you just have to be doing it with love and you've got to want to be caring about it you it does they don't work if you're doing it with bad intentions but as long as your heart's open and you're in the willing and and, and state to help someone then it this works really well and uh, the symbols themselves i've got a picture if i can share screen of somebody in the, when i was in japan giving a course a guy came up to me and said can i take some pictures of you using the energies and, and the symbols. And I said, of course you can. And I had some cards like the one I've just showed you. I've got a set of cards which have got all the symbols on. And I was showing this to the people in the course. And uh, he took some pictures. So let me see if I can show you the picture. And these are the pictures that he took. See, you can, it's so strong. This isn't curly on the camera. It's something else, some very clever device that picks up energy. So those are the photographs you took. Um, there's energy coming through me as I'm doing some work there. And the symbol in the middle here is, is the protection symbol. And this is the stress release. And this one here is the healing symbol. And there's, the, there's about 34 symbols altogether, but he just took these few. But it, it's, a, it's a lovely, and it, it, a lot of our work is trust. I mean, you must get this all the time with people who come to speak to you. Uh, but, uh, Kevin, it's, it, it's a lot of the time you just have to trust and hope that everything you believe is working and right. And it really does help when you get some sort of, uh, confirmation of course you get it with the people's reactions to your work but it is really nice to have something to see like this to to show you that yeah these these symbols really do have a have a force that they're bringing in hmm. yeah interesting okay and uh, thank you for sharing that image on screen i appreciate that as well because i know people were will enjoy just to to see that and what is the most common form of healing that people come from? And just before you answer that as well, I just want to mention this, that, uh, you know, you obviously teach people to open their hearts. Um, and as you said before, when you're doing that work with them, you're also, you know, not allowing whatever they're going through as well to affect you as well. 
Yeah, that's true. You have to protect yourself. Really important. Most important of all. The first thing I teach everybody is to protect themselves before they even start. Yeah. And it's interesting. I, I've been doing all my work online recently. And uh, that works very well. In fact, it works incredibly well, uh, surprisingly well. Um, I'm waiting. The next thing, Karen, is holograms. I can't wait to the point where I can get a client to come and sit next to me from wherever they are in the world, you know? And just just like something out of Harry Potter. It feels like that anyway when I'm doing a Zoom, you know? One minute I've got a blank screen, the next person, there's a person there. <laughs> and we start, we start interacting. But one of, one of the things that's happened is on one of my courses recently, I was teaching how to clear karma and how to, we're talking about the differentiation between curses and karma and just plain bad luck and your own negativity creating bad luck, you know. Uh, so that, that was the subject of the, the, of the course I was doing online. And I asked people to sit at one point and just to put their own, what they thought their own, maybe their own negative programming was that they needed to heal. And then suddenly on the, on the PowerPoint screen, this screen writing started to appear. And, and it was like, hang on a minute, that, that, that can't happen. That just can't happen. And I thought, what well, if it's only me that's seeing this? And it was the words, I can't remember the exact words that were said, but it was like repeating something that I said, but in a different way. It just, it's, a, it's very spooky. It's yeah, spooky. no, I mean, it sounds it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, suddenly on this screen, along comes the green one. So I uh, thought, right, I've got to do something quickly here because I'm going to scare them. <laughs> All my clients are kind of me. Oh my God, what's going on? So I quickly cleared the energies and then I called in protection. And I realized then that whenever I do any teaching, I have to protect not just myself and I seal my energies, seal the energy of my client, but also seal the connection and the computers. Because there's no doubt about it that spirit, especially if you've got some mischievous spirits, they can actually get in through the electronics. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. <laughs> well, yeah. Would you say then that um, the most common thing that you're healing is people's hearts in a sense? And would you say that? Uh, what am I, one of the most things I spend time healing. Hearts is right up there on the top because pe so many people want love in their lives so i get a lot of people mainly women i have to admit who are looking to meet someone and uh so the heart has always been a huge thing for me that the clearing of the heart the opening of the heart and the pulling back the fragments of a broken heart and the impact of attachments to people in our past all these things, cutting cords to people who've moved on. This is a common theme. And one of the things that can happen is that you've made a vow and a promise and a contract to someone, and you've forgotten that you committed yourself to someone. I mean, it's just like the first marriage. I mean, how many of us have got second, third marriages? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we don't clear our commitment to the first marriage before we move into the second marriage we may have said goodbye and we may have thought we moved away but but if we've made vows and especially if we made them in a church made them from our heart and soul then they're going to be still there and they and when when you when you have a vow it's, it creates a very strong karmic bond with you to the person who you made the promise to. So it's a, quite hard from a spiritual perspective to pull yourself away. And you are very likely to sort of feel a bit guilty. And it may be that the vow even stops you from meeting somebody else. So anybody that comes to me with problems of meeting a new love, the first thing I'll do is clear with them because it's their vow and their promise they they have to be compliant is to, to actually clear 
the vows they've made. In fact, I had a client recently, which was which was a lovely, lovely it was a really nice story. I like I like the happy endings. <laughs> um, she had been widowed for five years, and she was. Uh, she said to me, "Anne, I'm ready now. We have quite a few sessions." And I've been helping her on all sorts of issues. And she said, I'm now ready to meet someone. I want to meet somebody and I want to have some love in my life. And I said, well, right, let's get on to it then. Let's get on to it. And I said, first thing you need to put is your intention of who you want to meet, what sort of person. Because then we're sending out the vibe of the vision. It's just a bit like manifesting, isn't it? You have to put out what you want or else you... Man, the universe has got no way of knowing what to to to, to bring to to you, and um, we need to clear all your connections to everybody else in your past. So uh, I did that with them. What we use is th- uh, a technique which works really well: is to take a thread like this. I've always got them on hand because we do, this happens all the time. So I. We say, take the thread that represents the cord that you created with the person that you've been involved with right from your teenage years. And we need to release that cord. Okay, so apart from any vows and promises we make, there is that cord that we make. when, When you love someone and you're thinking of them all the time, you're sending out thoughts which are energy. And when you think you send out consistent thoughts of the same type, which in this case it's love, and perhaps a bit of passion and something else as well, <laughs> that creates a very powerful connection. And it's important that even though that person may have moved off and taken the cord that they attach to you, because most cords are double cords, yours and theirs, which hopefully that's good relationship. (laughs) When they pull away, you have two things that happen. You have a broken heart because they pulled their cord out and you are left with a cord that's like dangling, if you like, yearning for that person. And the more you think about that person, the stronger that gets, but it's not giving you anything. So to allow for a fresh love, to come in, a new love to come in, you need to clear the old cord and you also need to heal the broken heart because it's very hard to to love with a broken heart. There's too much pain there. And and the other thing that people do, of course, is which she'd done, is her husband, last husband had died and though there was a sort of bit of a barrier up that I don't want to get involved in anybody else again because it hurts too much. And we needed to get we need we needed to get rid of those barriers of protection that she'd put around her heart. And then we did that. We we cleared loads of cords. She kept thinking of other men that she'd been involved with. It's really quite funny. And we cleared everybody and all the energy of every man she'd ever been involved with. We cleared it all. We put out her intention of meeting someone. And you won't believe it. The next week she got in touch with me. She said, I cannot believe it, Anne. I've met someone within a week. And it was an old, old flame of hers way back who wasn't listed on the, to the ones that she mentioned because it had never been fulfilled. It was been a sort of an unrequited love from a distance that you get that when you're young and uh, anyway amazing she's the there's a beautiful relationship budding there now yeah I, I could see you know even with that cord you could even um you know if you if you were going to do it yourself as well you could even break that cord when you're ready as well um, yeah absolutely yeah um i mean physically break it that's what i'm thinking well you, what, you by, by taking a thread and literally breaking it you're showing the that you're making that break. So there's also symbology in healing and because you're showing your power over the energy, you're taking control of the energies and especially when you want to release negative energies and take a situation where you're breaking up with somebody, there's always a lot of negative stuff goes on. There's a, there's a lot of... And so 
you don't want that anyway. So it's always a good thing to, to cut the cord, you know. In fact, relationship problems are, are very high on the list of things that people come with. And the first thing I do is say, right, we need to heal your relationship with love and we need to clear all the words, all the thoughts, all the feelings that you've sent towards that person that are not of love. And this isn't like a judgment, but that's what, what happens in relationships, you know. So you just gotta, you've got to get rid of all that stuff. And then but very often a relationship can revitalize itself if there's the, if there's the, the will there, of course. Oh, yes, there's... I do believe in that as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, may, maybe the relationship you was in, uh, you just needed that break just to, you know, realize what you had as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's really, there's some very powerful things we can do around uh, relationships and the heart. And the heart itself is an interesting thing. It, the, the, the emotional heart, um, it can literally be broken in half. I mean, I've come to people and I thought, well, I'm healing the heart. And they, well, the heart doesn't seem to be there. Seems like, you know, <laughs> you put energy in and it's sort of, there isn't any reaction. You don't feel it. So then I think, have you had your heart broken? Yeah. I, yes. And it all comes out. So I, then I just bring that the two parts, and sometimes it's more, and bring all the parts of the heart together. And that's done with intention. As, you, know? you know, if you say to energy, I'm bringing energy together, energy comes together. It was a sort of form of dominion that we have. We have a, an authority over energy that we don't use enough. That's another, another probably a subject for another day. But, but you can bring bring in that energy and you can, and what I do is I, I fill that heart with the healing symbol. I bring in the healing and the love, and I heal the heart, and then I bring it back. So what I would do is I would take your heart, I would just bring it full of love, and then I give it back to you and I just do it like this. And that brings back to you your own heart in a healed state. So obviously, um, do you think, uh, well, hearts can be scarred, can't they? Right. So yeah. um, I suppose scarring can happen from even childhood, can't it? I suppose a lot can happen from childhood. Most of it happens in childhood, really. Uh, well, I say most of it. Some of the some of the worst things can happen in childhood because you're not in a position to walk away. And uh, as an adult, although we don't always walk away when we're going through bad times and we are being treated badly by someone, um, we we have got that option. But a child has got does not have the option. And if a mother and father don't love them or cannot show their love in an appropriate way, then the child will definitely have a, a scarred heart because the heart is open looking for a love right from the minute it's born. I mean, because we come from a place on a higher plane where everything is love, the expectation of love is there. And we do expect love from our parents. And if they can't do it, it will leave its its imprint. And that is, again, the, another one up high on the list of most, you know, obvious things that are most common things that happen for people is that their damage in childhood that hangs with them right through 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. I have clients of all ages that have suddenly decided that they are now going to heal what happened in childhood. That's, that's interesting because I, I believe that um, most of the traumatic things that happen to us are planned in a way. And, uh, it, it, it sounds a bit callous to say these things. It sounds a bit cold bloody really. But if you think that you, one of the purposes for coming to Earth is to expand and grow your consciousness, you don't expand consciousness just sitting like a princess in a castle and 
having everything you want. You don't grow, you don't learn compassion, you don't learn empathy, you don't learn about yourself or anybody. In fact, you probably end up as a spoiled, what do you call a spoiled brat, <laughs> a, a spoiled princess, a narcissist. We won't go that down that route, but the, there's been a plenty of op opportunities to see narcissism around us all the time. So, yes, <laughs> but you, 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 you have these challenges in childhood, and I, I think they're planned that way because you can't run away, and then your whole focus is to find the love, to heal and to discover your value through your own endeavors to heal. So it's like you have to go through something to, to get to some growth. I always think of the case of, of Buddha. Buddha was born a prince. He had a wealthy family. He had everything he wanted. He lived in a castle, and he could have stayed there and stayed a prince. But he... His life purpose was to obviously to discover about life and about uh, human behavior and how you could develop and grow yourself spiritually. So he knew that he had to leave the castle for that to happen. So that's why he went off on his travels with next to nothing to, to face life and to find out what it's like to be poor, what it's like to be suffering, what it's like to be abused, I'm sure he was plenty of abuse. People without anything drifting around the streets are always abused. So he went through all that to, to, to get to where he wanted to be, which, of course, was evolved in a, in a beautiful way and had a legacy to teach others. Now, we aren't Buddhas, but we all are evolving and we're all setting our own targets and we've all set us up targets before we even came to earth you, if you take the concept that we're uh, spiritual beings then there has to be some continuation there has to be some purpose to the life on earth and my belief is that we come here to to grow you don't you need those challenges so the best place in a way it sounds harsh to have those challenges in childhood when you can't run off and get a quick fix to sort it. So then the next challenge, of course, is having survived that, is then to heal the wounds of the of what's happened to you in childhood. And then and, and they and they 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 obviously abuse is the worst, but programming is one that happens to virtually everybody. Are you you're programmed to, to be fearful or you're programmed to think you're useless or you're programmed to think you're amazing, <laughs> whatever you're programmed. But you are programmed through childhood. And that's one of the things we do work on in healing is to, uh, to work out what's the truth and what isn't the truth. When you, you look at how you feel about yourself, why are you feeling like that about yourself? Very often it's because someone's told you to be like that or indoctrinated you into it. Of course, we also have experiences and we learn from those experiences about ourselves. But one would normally, the problem is once you've got a negative uh, vibe about you and a negative belief, that and, or a wounding of any kind, a scarring, as you put it, Kevin, is that is an, a low vibrational energy. And what that is, is it sits like a, 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 um, a scar. I've got something I can show you. Can I, can I show you again something? Which might explain what I want to say here. Um, it's about the uh, um, spiritual energy. See, these... These big black spots here, these are imprints and scars from trauma and bad experiences. And they hold, they don't only just hold, they just look low vibration. They're low vibration because they're full of emotions that are held in. They're like a, that fist that we hold in. 
I had a bad experience with whatever as a child, and now that that stays with me as an imprint. And the imprint throws up thoughts. It sends it sends messages of pain to the brain, which then turn into thoughts, <clears throat> negative ones. But it also it also lowers your whole vibration of your whole soul. This is your soul. This is the part of you that comes down to earth with your body. It low vibration, so it, and it acts as a magnet because the way life works here, whatever you send out is matched by the universe. So whatever vibrations you send out will be matched. And if you've got lots of heavy negative thoughts and guilt, shame, um, anger resentment, those anxiety and fear, these are the worst ones, they, they sit inside you, they affect you physically, they, they're toxic, so they affect you physically, but they act as a magnet and they attract more negative energies, uh, more and challenges. And what's one quick way of just um, helping to alleviate some of them as well or to heal them? Well, the 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 intention is the start intention you decide that you you decide that you are going to you're going to start to love yourself you're going to start accepting yourself you're going to start to heal yourself you're going to release the the grievances you, you're not going to be a victim anymore this is your will in action your free will saying I don't want to be like that anymore. That's when people normally start their spiritual journey. When they go, I don't need to be like this anymore. I'm going to feel better. And then they look for ways and help to do to 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 do this. I also think Healing though, I, is, let me just say this, I also think you can be on your spiritual journey and still go through this process. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, I didn't mean to I interrupt there. To, no, that was good. No, that's a good point, though. It isn't one easy, one day, everything comes click, and then, oh, look, we're right, we're climbing the mountain, everything starts to come right. It doesn't work like that. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Because there are still challenges to come, because you're still here to learn. And if you haven't learned your lessons, they're going to keep coming back and bobbing on the nose. If you choose to for example i can think of something like say i mean i've got friends who've gone through two or three abusive relationships their life purpose holds a plan to find their self-worth that they're worthy of more than being abused that they can stand up and say no that they they can demand and look for love and that's in themselves and that's others. a that's a little bit like having a narcissistic experience and then another narcissist comes into your life but then it's where are your values uh in what you've been through before compared to the the you know the new experience and can you uh can you see the teaching in that as well yes yes and it usually kicks in eventually that you decide that you're <laughs> worth being with somebody who absolutely cares for you and what I've noticed is when you're young you look for a woman sexy and that looks good with you and thinks you're wonderful or whatever whatever when you're older you're looking for someone who's kind who actually cares about you and not just trying to look make you feel you know looking good the, 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 we, we change our values as time goes on and that is us learning lessons <laughs> we we change our values we start to seek different things if we don't and I've, I mean I know 70 year olds are still going through exactly the same old loop <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and sometimes you know to others the person that you're with may not be uh, you may you know they may not be uh, attracted to them like you are do you know what I mean and it, and it can be other things you know you know I, know I know you mentioned looks there but sometimes it's not even about that it's it's about something else 
you know, on a soul level, is attracted you to that person to learn that lesson or lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could be, of course. There are situations where you you've made a a contract with somebody in a previous life to be with them forever, and they come bobbing back into your life. My first husband, my first husband was a, a lovely man, but uh, he was more like a brother to me. And yet, when I saw him. I felt completely drawn to him and it felt absolutely right that we were together. But he he, he taught me a lot. He, he taught what it's like. <laughs> One of the things he taught me, what it's like to live with somebody who doesn't value themselves and who gets into depression. Boy, that's a painful one. It is a painful one. And uh, yeah. There's just so much to your work. And every book that you've done has, uh, you know, has been your your sort of valued experience in what you've gone through and how you've healed yourself, which is fantastic, and how these books continue to heal others. Obviously, in the times that we live in right now, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of depression, a lot of loneliness, right? Now. And I know you would have covered this stuff, but just for those going through anything like that right now, what would you say is a good bit of advice for them? People who are feeling very alone, this is a good time to ask yourself, what do you really, really want with your life? This is the one of the things that you can, I always want to look for the positives in everything um, because that puts you into a high vibration and it just makes life easier. So even if you are on your own and you are feeling uh, isolated, as things you can do. You can, first of all, set the intention that you're going to fill your day with some things, some things that put, maybe helping other people. You can easily do that by just simply watching the television, seeing people that are in distress, and just sending your good thoughts and your love to them. And if you want to use the symbols and the I use that they're, they're around, we can pass them on in the... the, the uh, course is full of this sort of thing but even if you just thought your love for them your compassion for them you're doing something for them that's one thing doing something for others will always make you feel better there's a lot of online teaching going on this is a great opportunity to say right i'm going to learn something new the course is out there on all sorts of subjects that's another thing so you're doing something for yourself, you see. This is for yourself. You have to take responsibility for how you feel for yourself. I suggest that you do a vision board. This is something I'm very excited about at the moment. And this is a vision board that I knocked up for myself. And it's easy, isn't it? You can do it with crayons. You can do it with downloading pictures or whatever. And this is me setting the scene of what I want for my life this year. And there's books, um, new books to be published. There's my, walking my dogs. There's, there's being healthy with my husband. There's joy. I like that one. Isn't that lovely? Joy. There's television work. There's my online courses. There's a, I've written a musical. It's, we're going to get that out one day, definitely. Friendship. Losing a bit of weight working with some new energies of light, selling a house, all this stuff. And then I put on it, look what happened in 2021. So this is you now taking control of what's happening in your life and this is how you want it to be. It's a, a form of manifestation, but I like it because you say, it's happened. I'm in now. I, when I look at this, I'm thinking, yeah, I really did well. I achieved all this. It's a different vibe to wish, want, wish, want. Yes, absolutely. And we do have control of our life. And I, I know you've been asked this probably many, many times, right? You know, destiny and free will. But also, I, I just want to add into that before you answer it as well, that, you know, there is this is what I say to people. There is going with the heart, of course, and that will lead you to, uh, if you want to call it purpose or joy, right? But we do have a brain as well, and it's good to in employ both the brain and the heart when making a decision. What's, what's your take? Oh, totally. I, I totally agree with that. We have free will, which sits in our solar plexus, if you want to put a place for it. It's here in solar plexus. 
determination and free will and the ability to um, put out your choices, make a choice. Then you have your creativity, which is in your sacral chakra to create. And then there's your heart with the passion of what you want. So those three together, fantastic, working together. So I, yes, we have a plan. We can change it at any time. We could tear the whole thing up if we wanted to. Uh, it's always there. And I've had experiences of that with people, which have been quite phenomenal. But it's, but you have to have start by saying, this is my responsibility. I have to decide to change things. And that's the intention that kicks everything off. Everything. No, the train does not know where to go until you give it a, a, a destination. It leaves it just got to have a destination and a goal and an intention. So set your intentions of what you want in your life, how you want to feel, how do you want to, what do you want to heal? Absolutely. And the healing is part of, you know, removing the blocks to help you move forward in the first place. This is what your work's about as well. Um, and so mm. much more. There's just one thing I would, you know, I've done, I've got over 100 YouTubes under my account, which is Alan Jones Healer. And they're there with lots and lots of different healings with different ones from anger to cutting cords to all the things I've talked about today. Um, but there's, a, there's one thing there that's called the morning ritual. And, and this, is a, this is a great way to start a day. <clears throat> the morning ritual is you start by bringing in a protection. And I suggest the blue flame of Archangel Michael, but you might want to pull white light around you. But just have the intention, your energy is sealed so that you're not affected by what's going on all around the world and all the thoughts and the fears and anxieties of everybody else. You're not affected by the way your sister-in-law thinks of you. You're, you're, you're sealing your energy and saying, right, that's it, that's my boundary. I'm not going to be affected by other people. Then you open your heart. We can't move forward with a closed heart. Well, we, if we can move forward, but we're not going to have a very joyful life. We really want a good life, and we want to feel happy and attract and get good things coming into our life, open your heart. So you just use your hands to open your heart. You can open your mind too, which is good, so that you get opportunities and see opportunities when they come past you and have a positive thought. And then finally, the, you may have seen in the diagram, there's a soul, but there's also a higher self, which is beautiful energy. And that's where our life purpose sits our wisdom sits, our intuition, and that's the true you. So you want to connect to that. So just do that three times with your hands. Your intention, I'm connecting to my higher self right now. So you set yourself up for the day by being connected, aligned, with your heart open, ready to go. Well, oh my gosh. There, like I say, is so much more we could cover. And I think what we'll do, we'll get you back on to cover um, the things that we haven't barely touched today, right? We will definitely get you back on. Um, but I, I was just trying to touch on a few important points of your work to begin with. And um, and of course, this is a common theme throughout your work, but it obviously said in different ways as well, which is always great for people. Again, um, and what would you say is the most important message of your work? Open your heart. Open your heart and heal your heart. Number one, that's been the theme for me all the way through my 25 years of working this. And every time it works, every time I touch someone's heart and I feel that clear the energy and heal the energy. Yeah, open your heart and heal your heart. And your website one more time, Anne, is? Anne Jones, Anne with an E, annejones.org. Okay, well, all the links to your YouTube websites, the course that we've talked about with the free book as well, and everything else that we've touched upon when it comes to links is in the description below. And it's just gone so quick, the time has with you. This hour is just shot by, you know. And like I say, I look forward to getting you back on again. And just thank you so much for giving us this oh, hour right now. Thank you. Oh, bless you, Kevin. Thank you. And go well yourself. Bless you.